welcome back to the channel. We've got a project here. There's a kitchen drain copper. It's a sink and a dishwasher. It comes down through and then they had a leak. They called a plumber who put in a PVC with fern coes. And now they have another issue of poor drainage. And so I'm going into the other room knock these ceiling tiles up. This is a basement. We've got an egress window there. There is a uh, T in the pipe and the pipe is right here and it's inch and a half copper headed toward me which is actually to the north and so you can see the height of that pipe right there. It goes through that floor joist which is two by eights one inch up at the bottom. You look over here and it's up about two inches. Let's check that out with a measurement. Okay, so the bottom of the pipe, you can see that, is about one and three eighths inch there. Getting the light a little better. About an inch and a quarter there. And already, get up close enough, that's inch and a half. So right now, the pipe's coming down lower and it's heading uphill, okay? Not much, but it's going uphill. Now here's the same pipe, we're over in the other room. We are about, about 18 feet away, and I need to run a straight edge, but here's the floor joist. It's below the floor joist. That's why this drop ceiling's in here. So right now we know it drops. But if we get up in here, it's a little tough to see it here. Let me uh, get some more light. Now this pipe has a big dip in it. It goes up and then back down over there. And it's sitting on top of a steel I-beam right here. And ideally, if you calculate it, a quarter inch to one eighth of an inch per foot, this pipe should be about an inch and a half lower than it is right now. So what happens is the pipe has a 90 degree turn down over there, way down in there, and then it goes uphill until it gets to this steel I-beam support. It's a ranch house, and then it turns. It's got another fern co here on the copper, and then it goes downhill, and from this point to the exit, which is another 12 feet over there, got another 90 degree bend is pitched properly you put a level on it and the bubbles half it's pitched this is not it's the opposite direction so the problem they're having is the kitchen sink and the dishwasher is plugging up and we have to cure that now let me tell you a little story about it now the pipe used to go right through that floor joist you see the hole drilled then we got a big notch out Another notch, another notch, and then no notch right there. And it went right through that wall. Let's go on the other side. Now it used to come right through right there in front of the window. You can't see the telltale of it, but it's in line with this window. It's approximately six inches from the wall. Comes over, comes over. Here's a wash tub. Behind this wash tub, there's our pipe. And then it goes down to an old leach field. This runs into it. You see how old that fitting is? This was always there. Then there's a copper vent. Goes up and out the side of the house. So that that is um, the way it used to be routed. And the city made it mandatory that the septic systems went away and then the sewage treatment plant came in and they came in and cut that pipe off. And they told the homeowners that it's got to be piped out the front of the house, out to the road, and then down. At the same time, they ran city water in here and had to swap their pipes around. So that's the story. Now the problem we're having is that when the plumber of the city, whoever, if it was hired, they don't remember 
I don't know. They don't remember. It, um, it has given problems about every year, every other year. They have to use Drano, that kind of stuff. So I know there's a problem from day one. Right here is the laundry in the basement. And this goes out into a leach field. They don't have any problem with this. And I know for a fact, a few years ago, that I dug this pipe up underneath a tree outside when they said it wouldn't drain. And I said, there's probably a tree root in it. And they gambled and listened to me, and we dug it up. It took us about two hours. We dug it up with a backhoe, and I found right inside the pipe it came apart it was an unglued fitting i took pictures and showed the homeowner that the root went right inside and filled the pipe so i replaced this section of pipe this works great it was cheap out of here in less than four hours and uh covered it up seeded it everything's all done um so for some reason they allow them to use this and this wash sink is allowed to use that now this can run all day long and doesn't fill up so I'm like to hook this back up the way it was to cure their problem because they've spent thousands so far on plumbers cleaning this out and roto rooter and nobody's fixing the problem. And the other cure would be if they wanted to build a partition wall here to support the house. They could probably take a cutting torch, sawzall, we've got some nice sawzall blades now, and notch out that beam so that we could allow that pipe to pitch proper. But they opted that if we can cure this by taking that tee out and going the opposite direction, shooting it down through there, then uh, we can go right into the way it used to be and it's already properly pitched. So that's what we're going to try. The only thing is, is uh, the inch and a half copper pipe is a little hard to get now and really pricey. So we're going to go PVC. The inside diameter is an inch and a half. And of course, it's thin wall. So the pipe won't fit in there unless I used inch and a quarter pipe, which I don't want to do. So I think I'll have to do some reinforcements because they've got the floor joist notched out really heavily, making it weak. I don't see cracking in them, but I want to fix that a little bit better. We might do like plywood gussets or something to help strengthen that up. And then uh, run our pipe down through there, through that wall. That's our project. So I'm going to get a material list. I don't know if I want that pipe to drain this way. That goes up to a laundry upstairs. I might cut that pipe probably back here somewhere. And then just have it go into a sanitary T or Y. Probably a Y. And head that out through. And that would eliminate that section of pipe. Make it a little simpler because the water would be going this way instead of straight out, having it go all the same direction. So that's the project. So I moved the bed out of the way here a little bit, and uh, I've got an example pipe. See, it won't fit through that opening, this inch and a half. And so we need to make them larger. Somebody already butchered them pretty bad. One, two, three three bottoms are missing and then you're not supposed to drill a hole that close to the edge probably if we doubled it up screwed and glued that kind of thing they might allow it but we're not going to be able to put a full pipe in there unless we continue on through this wall and this is just just hanging out there and right here's a stud so we should be able to go through here it's going to be up about this high and miss everything so I'll get a hole saw for that. It's going to come up. I need to check my pitch. It's going to mess with this metal angle. So um, the pipe won't be attractive hanging below the ceiling. But we're not looking for attractive here. We're looking for function. So I might build a uh, white, I don't know, something to go underneath it to box it off. A little chase without destroying the ceiling. Um, that's not my worry right now. We just need to make that hole. A little bit larger we can use a jigsaw or I don't know if I can do a sawzall without screwing a, uh, a little piece of scrap plywood on there first and uh, I don't have a lot of supplies with me to do that 
So we'll figure this out and get started, but I need approximately two inch hole through that one, this one, this one, and this one, and then it looks like it's gonna come below it here. Now, I put the hole saw up in there and it worked. I used the jigsaw in this one and uh, made a circle. That's our pitch. So see where it's gonna come down and then right on out. And it should go through this wall approximately here, but I'm gonna measure each joist and calculate the pitch and line it up. We could put an angle gauge. If the grids weren't in the way, I could do a six foot level or straight edge. But I want a continuous pitch down. And then once we get out of that room, the wall gets back that way. This is studded in, see how thick it is? And I'd like to send it over by the wall out of the way so it'll have a uh, an elbow in it. And you can see now what we should do is uh, there's room enough up there. I think we can take, cut that pipe off, send it out into this and use a uh, TY and send the water this way. You don't want a, a total 90 on it. And uh, we could eliminate the rest of that pipe that runs out through there and have this laundry send it out there also. They don't use it. There's no laundry in that room right now. But uh, it's actually a bedroom. But um, that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and uh, finish this up. I got one more to trim. And it should pop out down below. And it's going to be close to that grid there. Hopefully it'll go under it. If not, we'll have to cut the grid. We'll figure out what we're going to do cosmetically here. I had to notch the rest of these. And it's going to come out right in this ceiling bracket. And there's a top plate and a hollow wall on the other side the ceiling is two inches lower so it may shoot right over top of that ceiling I've got to move a bunch of stuff and I thought these are two by eights these are two by ten so I feel a little better about it but we'll probably be making some plywood gussets screw and glue them on there for additional support none of these are cracked and it's you know a couple inches from the edge of the wall so it's not like it's out here in the center the steel beams right here so it's and then another partition wall not what i like but you have to do what you got to do if we drop the pipe down it'd be in the bedroom area so they don't want that and we don't want to lower the ceiling any lower okay i drilled through and i looked out i came up right there flush with that extra piece of ceiling so i probably can just continue it they don't open this window and come right across this ceiling and it might come down into here. This is quite a bit lower the way a drop ceiling should be put up. The other one is a little close to the floor joist, like an inch and a half. You need at least three. So pitch-wise, I think we got it. I just have to trim off that little wallpaper there. And uh, maybe I'll get some 10-foot lengths up in here and see how it works. What a project. I got a 10-foot length of pipe in there. I got it in there... Uh, it's got that pitch that I want. It's not too great. And it looks like I can notch out the top of that corner track. And it should fit in there flush without upsetting the ceiling. So I didn't think that would be that good. I'm glad it will. And then we can disconnect this fitting. Cut all that pipe out of there. Come over and put a, a Y in that. T-Y. And then... Out in this other room, the pipe comes across. It's up out of view of the window, so I'm pretty happy with that. You can see the pitch heading down. Now I'm gonna continue, and it should come across somewhere right about in here. And if it clears the last tile, that's good. If not, we'll deal with it then. We might go back against the wall, or I just might keep it right here in the open and go right straight down, because it won't be affecting anything in the utility room. And just put a couple pipe hangers on it. And uh, you got to keep that continuous pitch so that the, you know, water can head down. But also you don't want to go too fast because solids like uh, soap scum, this is a kitchen sink, a dishwasher, food crumbs, fats, anything like that um, can settle in the pipe. So you want a gradual slope. And that's what I need to continue here. If you drop it too quick... The water will drain, the pipe will clog. So I think I'm going to 
probably head this section on over. There's no sense of cutting it there because I can feed a pipe that way and a pipe that way. There's no sense of doing this and then cutting the center out. So I'll feed the rest of this on over to this junction and then we'll work on disconnecting this drain for the laundry. Hook that in and then, um, yeah, that's it. That's what we'll do. Okay, I got my plan here. I'm going to take that Fernco T out. I'm going to purchase a cap Fernco to cap that off. If they have a, a copper cap, maybe I'll swap one on there. I don't know if they carry any inch and a halfs. Doubt it. Doesn't matter. There's no pressure on it. Cap that off. Then I'm going to run a new Fernco onto our pipe. We're going to extend it on through to here. I'm going to buy a Y, a TY, and then I need a connector over and a long sweep angle to go up in. We're going to pitch our pipe on out. On this side, I drilled through that little header piece up there. I haven't trimmed that off yet, but see that's up out of the way of the window, which is fine. I'm going to put a union on that, glue that on. I'm going to come across and I'm going to have a long Y come down. I'm sorry, long uh, 90 come down, long sweep. And I've got a Fernco. I'm going to hook to that copper. This pipe here is a vent, so we're going to be vented, which is going to be fine. I ran this sink for quite a while, and the water dissipated. Nothing collected, so this is going to handle the drain. And then I'm going to go and uh, assemble things back together. So let me go get some material. All right, here's my little schematic here. What we got is this is a drain it goes to now. The kitchen sink comes this way and goes out, goes up over that beam and plugs right there. So we're going to put a cap on that pipe, a fern co. We're going to get a straight fern co, inch and a half. And we're going to put a PVC pipe and then a probably a sanitary T and then a section of pipe, a 90 degree elbow, and then up to the laundry. And we're going to go with a section of pipe, a union, that's not to scale. There's another section of pipe right there, and then a, um, a long 90 coming down to a section of pipe going to a fern co to the copper. So it's pitched down, and now we have to use fern co's on the changing of pipe type. And then we're going to glue the rest. So PVC primer glue and little parts we're going to get here. All right, we'll pick out some pipe. You got any nice clean ones? Never any clean ones. We'll get some fittings. Throw this down here for someone to trip on. I got Dawson in here somewhere. He's going to help me find some fittings here. We'll get some uh, inch and a half. See if they got a TY. See what they got here. Long sweep. Compared to our paper now, we got our, I got a street 90, I got a long sweep, I've got our sanitary T, one of the two I'm going to try to use, we got our long sweep 90s, one for this end, two for here, and I got my cap for here, I've got an extra um, Fernco inch and a half, I already got a couple of my own, here's a reducer inch and a half to inch and a quarter for the copper, our cap, and a length of pipe, and a Dawson smiling face. So, I guess that's it. We're going to go get something to eat. I'll probably start back in in the morning, but we'll get out of this place. It's too expensive. That's a 10-foot leg. The pipe Dawson stood it up, and it just stays there. That's a pretty good cut, isn't it? Yeah. We, we ought to find some, uh, find some ceiling tiles here, too, that match. And you know what? They've got the straight or the plane in the bedroom. they got those, like, in the laundry room. Or those maybe over there by the other bathroom. We'll see. Well, it's the next day. Look what happened. We got two storms in a row. And uh, sure doesn't look like spring, but it is pretty. I hear crows. I hear little chickadees. It's all kinds of birds out here. Well, I'm going to grab uh, the table saw out. And I'm going to rip some... Uh, uh, I don't know, gussets, I guess you could call them, but I'm going to cut some plywood pieces to go on the side. There's a bird under the trailer. There's a bird flying here. They're all over. 
Um, I'm feeding birds out back here, so I kind of want them to, you know, what's the word? Try to be uh, cautious that I don't scare them away. I want them to just hang out here and eat some mosquitoes coming up. Won't be long. See, they're over there. Um, but anyways, I'll get the tables out. I got some scrap plywood pieces. Um, probably use three-eighths to half inch. I probably don't need three-quarter inch. I want to make some um, pieces of plywood that are about nine to nine and a quarter inches wide, the width of a two-by-ten. I'll cut the circular holes around the pipes. But I want to put it on each side of the floor joist. So I'll cut a couple extra. I want to pick up some uh, construction adhesive and glue. See, there's one on the dump trailer there. I don't know. Feels nice out, but it's still cold. Okay, out here in the shed, I got some new cutoff pieces of 7 16 OSB. They should work great. Nice strips. I think I'll rip them to nine, nine and a quarter, and then um, I'll square them up. My length should be, uh, you know, we're only doing a two inch pipe hole, so I'll probably do, uh, I don't know, 16 inches long, something like that. And, um, we have, I believe it was six floor joists that were a little bit compromised. And some of them were original to the house. And some I had to finish so we can keep our pipe pitch. And so I'll cut enough to do like six, seven, or eight of them and see what else, if there's anything else to repair. I got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. It looks like I got eighteen pieces. So I got plenty. What I'm going to do when I get to the job site is we'll put them up to our opening, and I'll mark it, and then I'll do a hole saw technique to give me a nice curve, and then we'll construction adhesive, and then screws or nails. I might take the air nailer, who knows, or whatever. But uh, that'll go on both sides of the joist and give the uh, floor joist added strength. The house is a 1955, I believe. So been like that for that long. But when we want to make better. We don't want to, you know, make any problems with it. So we'll fix it while we're in there, and then we'll put that ceiling back. Okay, back at the job site. What I got is I got all those gussets cut. What I want to do is go alongside of each joist. So I've got to pull a couple nails. I've got to pull a couple staples loose so I can get the gusset in there. Um, I'm going to slide that pipe out of the way first. I want to measure from the edge of our pipe, make sure that the top of our gusset holes are exact so I can just push the pipe up to it. And then uh, I want to cut off the uh, fitting there, pull that pipe out before I get more stuff in the way. I'll probably set this up on time lapse. I want to take and glue and nail or screw. I'll figure that out. Uh, our gusset plates, I'll do one at a time and then drill and then drill the opposite way and keep our pitch running downwards. You get the idea here nails glue scabs on either side like a gusset 
run our pipes through. That's going to help the floor joist. It's right at the outside wall. But I, I can't leave it with the, uh, you know, the hole in the bottom of the joist like that. So it was here. So we're going to deal with it. I did notice another problem over here when I remove this tile is there's a crack in this joist right where all these wires run through and right where they put the uh, the uh, duct work. So I want to check this out. I'll probably do something with this, sandwich something on there too. But concentrate on this pipe. I cut off the drain that went over here from the laundry. Now I'm going to come out through and hook in. And then I'm going to run another pipe over to that one. So you get the idea. I'll come back on when I get something accomplished here. Now... The only change I did is I had that T in there and it was flopped backwards coming back for this laundry. And I want to pitch this laundry down into here. And what I did is I just flopped the T around so that the water can continue to come through. But it has a chance to go that way. And that might help vent the other bathroom because I didn't see a vent going up through the roof. So even though this pipe goes uphill a little bit, there's got to be air space in the top. So this may help as a vent. If that doesn't work, I'll just put the uh, fern co in there. It doesn't matter. Straight. And uh, this pitch looks good coming down. This isn't hooked up yet. But I'm going to start on this, bring this over and down. Well, I have to use the sanitary tee because the long TY is too high. There's no way to get an elbow in there. Or to be, be up too close to the floor so I'm gonna come across like this I'm gonna cut a, a section this is gonna line up good this is gonna line up good we'll keep our pitch going my pipes cut to length and my fittings all primed got my pipes up above primed now I'm gonna fit them together and push it up on the pipe and onto here in one motion okay so there we got it together there's a nice slope down through I've got a long sweep, 90, and then I've got a uh, street, 90, because we needed the height, and then a uh, sanitary tee because the Y was too tall. So, and I got my tee put together here. So now we're going to go out and put a union, another length of pipe, a long sweep, 90, and then go down into our fern co. Now in this room, I put a union on. I cut my pipe to length. I've got my transition union here. This comes up with the correct pipe pitch. This is the length of pipe we need. Okay, I got a little bit more information. As you can see this setup here. This used to be a dog grooming shower tub that was in here and it was a um oh what should i say i guess it's a soapstone and it was a commercial dog cleaning service this setup used to drain down into that pipe instead of that going to the leach field i'm not sure it does i thought it might have went to the perimeter drain Usually the perimeter drain doesn't come inside the house like this. So now I'm wondering is this sink's hooked up to where the old sink is. The shower valve was right here. It used to be a shower valve. And then we got extra supply lines for laundry. The um, I think it's a leach tank that this goes out to. Homeowners don't remember exactly what it is. I thought it was the original septic tank, but the septic tank is located out front that's not being used anymore. And so this is all questionable. Do I want to run more soaps down into there than what existing, you know, what's going in there now? Or do I want to elbow this and try to adapt into this pipe, which I know is handling the soaps and so on. And this you know, I'm sure there's dog hair, whatever, soaps and everything. It's gone out there for years. And they said there was never any trouble with it. But because it's way down, you know, three feet lower exiting, I'm wondering if it's not just a perimeter drain. And I don't want to have a future problem with that. So now 
I think I'm going to do away with that, come over. I'm going to have to cut pipes and figure out what I want to do here. This three inch sanitary tee is sl slammed right over tight in this concrete. A little bit of moisture has come in, so this isn't sealed up. Do I want to mess with this, which is inside the wall? That's kind of a worrisome thing. There's no pipe here to hook on to. This has the trap for the laundry. So I can't just come across and dump into this because the laundry will need a trap. And I don't really want to dump my sink into a trap. So ideally, if this came across straight and up to a uh, T or maybe I did a, a sanitary T running this way and then just put this on the end of it. That's what I got to come up with. <sighs> you know, it's one of these things where I'm sure it's going to work because this works. You could run that sink all day long. Nothing ever backs up. And you know, what's the right thing? I'm guessing this is probably the right thing coming over into this. This is definitely more work. Let's see what I come up with on that. All right, I guess what I'm going to try to do is get this fitting off right here. And it's going to be difficult. It is touching the wall back here. So what I want to do is try to save this piece of pipe that's about two and a half inches long. And then go ahead and put a two inch reducer on there, T, come up with a long sweep, 90, another 90, so that I can come up over and into that. And then over here, I want to extend it and probably drop it down. It's a two inch, not necessary with this type of drain hose. Um, I'm doing an inch and a half trap. For the laundry so the hard part is to get that apart and I guess I'm going to start working on that I'm going to use like a oscillating cutter I think they make a drill bit that'll fit inside there and do it but it's like I said it's right against the wall I mean it's slammed on the wall probably the ground has shifted and yanked that pipe over but um, I'm gonna work on that I'll get that hanger off in there and we'll keep going here all right I use the oscillating tool cut that pipe off drain the trap in the sink I'm going to try to get in there and get that fitting off and uh, wish me luck on that all right I got that fitting off in there so now I'm going to go get my parts okay I ran to the store got my stuff I got a long 90 another long 90 I got a two one and a half, one and a half sanitary tea. I got a uh, one and a half trap. Now I need to do a standoff pipe, 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 and glue things up. Well, here it is. I got my two to one and a half, my sanitary tea direction going that way. My trap, I can't go any higher The uh, for the washing machine. Here is my my down pipe gotta put that in there put it in give it a little bit of a twist line it up straight with a pipe it's going to have a slight slope downhill give it about 10 15 seconds let her set up I think that looks pretty good I needed to clear these pipes and then come across here and clear the valve. So got a few things going on there. And now I'm going to measure between this and that. And I'm going to keep that same pitch. I want about an eighth to a quarter inch downhill. And uh, not sure there's enough length there, but I think I got just enough pipe left to do it. Okay, we got it all together. We got our trap to trap the fumes for our, our laundry. We got our sanitary tee, we got our angle on our pipe, our pitch up. Oh, there's a bracket up there holding it, supporting it. We got our pitch running right on across. Remember our pipe exits out up there, it's kind of out of view. And we'll go in the other room 
I put up a couple ceiling tiles. I left the pipes exposed. I'm running water in it. Testing, make sure there's no drips anywhere. I don't see any. We've got a nice pitch downward, very gradual. One eighth to a quarter inch a foot is what they want. And the only issue I had is this one tile. It cracked on me putting it in. I don't know if you can see that. Get it in out of focus here. Um, that one cracked because the pipe is like right there. So, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier I might have to do a bulkhead. I might run a bead of caulk on that. Maybe putty knife, smooth it out. If the homeowner wants me to do a little better, I guess I could make some kind of little, little trunk right there to cover it. But everything looks good. Everything works. And like I said, the only change I did is the water can still go this way run down that way and this could act as a vent because it goes on over to the next bathroom over there and so that can easily come out and put a uh you know just a fern co union in there if you need it so that's it guys i'm just going to put the tiles up i'll be back tomorrow it's getting late in the day now got a little sunshine i want to go home and play outside for a minute but thank you for watching just a simple uh i guess it's simple got it a little complicated cutting but Reinforcing those joists, you know, they've been like that since 1955. And um, I think I did better, glue and nails. And uh, so I got to pick up a couple tiles because those were a little bit damaged. But I'll get a couple tiles put in there and this project will be done.